What's up, guys? Comics Remix 17.2. Keep the ball rolling. Junior. David Sanchez. All right. This episode is kind of very special to me. Kind of very, yeah. Um, me, specifically, more than you, because I'm more the collector. You're more the, um, the casual. I'm going to look at it if I like I'm it. Not not a look, guys, I'm not a collector. I'm, uh, I guess you could say I'm a rehab. I've been rehabilitated from it. Um, the addiction owns me no more. But see, that's my point of view from it. There you go. Um, everybody that knows me, like personally, especially those that have been to where I lay my head at night, um, you guys have seen my collection. I have been a comic book collector for 21 years since I was 8 years old. Um, you were there. You know how I go. <laughs> I was you were the only person I ever sold my collection to. And then like a week later, I bought the whole thing back. Yeah, because then after I read them, I was like, well, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Yeah. Traded them for G.I. Joe's. Yeah. Anyway. Because um, <laughs> I could play with G.I. Joe's. <laughs> uh, like I said, 21 years worth of comic collecting. Um, about 15 years, maybe a little longer, uh, collecting action figures. You know, and I don't mean... Bo There's two types of collecting when you say action figures. You keep them in the box, mint and package. You know, that's me. And then there's those who just collect them because they like them, they open them, they display them. There's nothing wrong with that. I display them in package. Point is, you can be a collector of anything. Comics, toys, video games, gym shoes, you know, books, whatever. You know, there's a fine line between collecting, obsession, and hoarding. Okay? There's two shows out right now that kind of touch on those. The first one is on the Travel Channel. It's called Toy Hunter. All right? That's the one you said you checked out, right? Yeah. Now, for those that don't know, if you've watched Pawn Stars and if you watched American Pickers, it's kind of like the, a mix of the two. No, it's actually, it's pretty much American Pickers. All right, whatever. It's pretty much, have you, have you ever watched uh, I've American watched Pickers, all of like the whole thing? Yeah. It's, that's all it is. The it, guy's going to people's property. It's like, hey, you have this, wanna okay, yeah, I see cash that. for it, you know? Um, but I'm a tenant, I'm a, my intent is to resell, so give me a good price. Now, this guy, the host of the show, Jordan, goes around, like you just explained, you know, it's American Pickers style, goes around people's homes. This is what you, let me look through your, your stash. Oh, you have this. Let me give you this much for it. His point of, his thing is to turn around and make a profit off of it. My, I like, okay, here's my good for it. I like watching shows like this because there's a show out there that I can relate to. It's stuff that I'm into. Okay. You know, right. it's like, hey, great. That guy just bought, you know, the host just bought a Transformer toy for 40 bucks that I own. That's pretty cool, you know. So I and it shows that our genre, our nerdism, is actually attracting mainstream attention now. You know, do you think it's informative in that way? Like, like even though it gets under your skin, you're like, well, I have that thing too. Maybe I should be up on eBay right now or doing something like that. No, I don't think that. And I'll tell you why. Are you get? Do you get very defensive about the show instead? To a point. What'd you say? To a point. So and do. This is why. This is why. So yes or no question. You do get defensive. I do. Point. All right, then. There you go. But let me tell you why. I'm not going to give you a yes or no without saying, give you a rhyme or reason for it. You know? You're defensive because something made you defensive. And I'm going to explain what All it right, is. There you go. They show this guy to be, when he goes around to these people's homes, the people that he's gone, like I've seen every episode so far. There's like four plus the pilot, so five. Right. He, sh he They make these people that he's buying the toys from look like they don't know anything about their collections. You know? He goes in there, hey, do you know what you have? I'll give you this much for it. You know? And usually when they... He's a dumbass because any true buyer of anything knows you don't tell somebody the the uh, the, the going price for it. If that's 100 bucks, I'm not going to tell you it's 100 bucks and try to give you 50 for it because you're going to sit there and you're going to want 100 bucks for it. Which... Um when I see that, it also lets lets me believe to a lot of um, behind the scenes pre scripting. Oh, of well. course, like, of like, course. Like, uh, there obviously, when you're watching this, you have to you you are thinking just like dreams, like oh, you're telling me you didn't know how much that was worth. But the reality is, he went in there, he found it, he's like, okay, this is how much I want for it. But instead of making that quick exchange, that's not interesting. That's not going to sell. That's not. Now gonna I'm going to tell you interest. why they do this. Okay, I, I know point. why. No, no, I know go ahead, why. Go ahead. Back after the the pilot of Toy Hunter aired, I have a buddy in Indiana named Lou. Okay. Right? Lou is a huge toy collector. He's he's actually helped me out in my collection, you know, in the last couple of years or whatever. Um, and he's been in the game for a lot longer than I have. He knows his toys. Right, right, right. He is also a collector. 
you know, he's got, he owns a house, he's got his own little place where he keeps his stuff, very neat, it's not a hoarder type thing, you know. He, we both watched the pilot of the episode, and he, I was on the fence about it, I didn't know how to feel. He told me how he felt after hearing what he thought about it, and it was very negative. I rewatched the show with what he said, and I saw what he meant, you know what I mean? And then it made me look at the show differently. I think I was for the show at first because I was just happy there was a show about toys on the air. But once he pointed things out to me and I rewatched the show, it made more sense in that in that aspect. So he ended up contacting the uh, the network and you know giving you know fan mail whatever, bashing the show, totally bashing it. Right, right. But he explained why he felt so negative about it. A few days later, he gets a phone call from the host of the show. The host goes on to tell him. This is how I feel about the show. And it was everything that Lou and I wanted to see and what we think the show should have been. He goes, the host, Jordan, goes on to tell Lou, I have to do it this way because the network believes people would not want to watch the show if they don't see money about And it goes back to you saying the whole uh, pre-script. Right, right. You know? So, in truth, there is that going on before the cameras roll. So you're right about that. Um... I get the whole shows have to make money. That's the reason they're on the, sh they're on the air. The more ratings, the more money. You know, I get that. Um, yes, you can make a profit by selling your action figures and your toy. And we're specifically on this. We're focusing on toys. You know, I yes, they are worth money. Yes, you can make a profit, but it's kind of he makes it look like. He's only in it for the money. But he goes around saying he's this big toy enthusiast. He's this big toy fanatic. But he's only in it for the money as far as what the show is showing him to be. Okay. But Which I think is a problem. Before before you talk to Lou and, and all, all that and you rewatched it, like when you first watched it, your initial reaction was that you liked it because it was something you related to. I was just like, hey, look, toys on the TV screen. And you watched the whole episode before you were telling. Yeah. Okay. But well, well, you, were, you were attracted to it because you were seeing all this cool stuff, right? Right. And ultimately... I did, I did have my little doubts while I was watching it. Nothing okay. major. Okay, but well here's the thing. Uh, ultimately, when you're trying to sell a show, you just can't sell it to nerds. You have to oh, sell I understand. To a whole I get that. Audience. I really do get that. All right, and this guy on there, he has to, he has to look like a business guy. He has to make money off of it because that's what's in right now. This whole found money thing. Right. And also, so that dealers out there, who go to these conventions, i.e., Comic Con, and they they have all the same stuff well how are they how are they going to compete with each other mm -hmm. you know so this guy he 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 there's footwork involved not just ordering stuff from ebay oh i totally not just, get it not just ordering I totally stuff from get diamond. It. i mean not just ordering stuff from diamond you, you know or i yeah. guess from ebay if you get a deal anyway. and resell it but it's to me it's a smart move if you're a retailer you should be doing this kind of footwork that's what the that's that's what this economy has brought you down to uh, if you're gonna, if people are gonna buy toys, they're gonna buy something worth buying. Right. Okay. Not just the same stuff that the other comic book store has. Okay. Okay. No, I, I, I not, get that. Not a battle of I'll get this statue ten percent cheaper than that one. I want something that I could actually take to an insurer. Uh, he'll give me an estimate on it, and I could actually hold on to it until I die, and then pass it on to my kids' college fund. All right. I get that. My my thing that bothers me about this show is that it's. I mean, I get why he's doing it. You know, like you just said, it's the network. You know, they got to show the money. People want it. This is what people want to see. I get that. But it's the problem with it. It's making the collectors look like, A, dumbasses. Like nobody. I mean, yeah, like we said, the pre, uh, pre-scripting or whatever before right. the cameras roll. But what matters is what happens when the, the episode is done okay. you know, and it airs because that's what we see. Yeah. So how does that make you? It, it offends me. And I know it offends Lou. Because after the episode airs, after it's all edited, it makes the, not Jordan, but it makes the collector look like Here, we're here's the thing. Let, idiots. Let me cut you off. Let me cut you off. How can it, it offend you? We're living in the age of reality TV. How Which can is that, offensive however, enough. No, no, no. Here, <laughs> how can that offend you? You're, you're to the point where you're accepting being on TV, where if someone came up to your house with a camera, they're going to push you on TV, you agree to it, and that's it. You're just in it. You don't I have like to, you don't have any creative control no matter what you think. I it's gonna be edited how the studio wants to edit it to 
to get like to what get they saw what they in your interaction. Something in your action was interesting. Was interesting, and that's what they're gonna keep. I would that part it. of interaction. But you know what? That's you. These people agreed to. No, it. I, I, yeah, okay. I, I get that. I get that. And of yeah, whether this makes collectors sound stupid or whatever, even as collectors, they have opportunity where they they could be like, you know what? I don't feel like saying that. That makes me uncomfortable. I think you know another problem is. If Jordan is the toy enthusiast he says he is, why why can't he take? Because usually in every episode he makes like three or four stops. Yeah. Why not take one of those stops and buy something for his own personal collection? Just maybe one episode, you know? Because he's he says yeah I love toys, but every like I said the bottom line is what comes out once the episode is edited and it does not make him look that way. Right. So if he truly is a toy enthusiast and he's the host of this show, you think he'd have just this much leeway to say hey look let me try this for one episode or a piece of an episode I do agree with that because even uh, since we already compared it to Pawn Stars or American Pickers uh, from all the episodes I've seen of those shows they do have points where it's like oh man this guy has an awesome car I'm gonna drop 20 on it and keep it for myself you know what I mean there are those points and um, actually I can't answer that for you except for the fact that whoever is a rhetorical that, question. no 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 the answer would be that whoever is in charge, the main editor or the main producer, mm -hmm. is like, no, stay on point. That could be the only answer to that. I, I'd like to see, I, I will admit, if the show ever comes out, when this show comes out on home video, on DVD, I'll buy it. You know, like I said, I get a joy out of knowing that something I'm interested in is now on TV. Something that uh, I grew up well, we both grew up, you know, it was kind of taboo. You wanted to be cool. You didn't collect toys. You didn't collect comics. You know, it was the nerdy yeah, we're, thing. We're in the nerd age. We're well, now, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It's, it's accepted now. Yeah, nerds so, are running shit. Since, yeah, since it's accepted now, you know, it's cool to be like, you know, yeah, I collect toys, you so, know. So what? I mean, as offended, so I, I, as offended as comic, as collectors in general can be about this show, um, to me, it is what it is. If if I could summarize how I feel like that, I'm gonna just gonna put it like this. Uh, oh, you you no no, it, actually yeah it is. If you're gonna have so much stuff in one room, nobody else gets to see it or appreciate it because you're not gonna die with it. You're gonna die alone unless you die in a blo in a horrible fire. So, yeah, it, that, that's just it. You die with it. You know what? It's just stuff. It's just stuff. They're just items, unless. And then, okay, and if you're the guy that's going to come to me and say, well, I'm going to hold on to it for my family because they need something. Well, that's BS, too, because unless you have some insurer come in and, and you know, just give you a value of the whole thing and be like, here, here, this is how much you pay for a month. You're insured for this much, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe you. You might not even okay? need an insurer, though, if you know what no, you're doing. There's, there's emotional attachments to it if, if all you do is kind of, like, push it down into one room. Unless you got awesome cases and really creating this little mini museum experience for people who come and visit your house, I, I still think it's BS. Oh, okay. well, I sell it. It's, it's good that you feel that way, because you do know, I was, I was getting to that, I was like, wait, what are you trying to say about me? But then I realized, I do is to play my action no, because I do play, I have statue cases, so. Right now, no, actually, the comic books that I did decide to keep, I'm actually gonna get uh, these really nice cabinets that, that are wall mounts, like you see on Ikea, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna face them with a comic, and then you can just like open them up like a little library. Oh, that's cool. Just take them out and read them. Except, of course, my signed comics by Michael Turner. Those ain't gonna I don't care about the signed ones by Rob Liefeld anymore. <laughs> 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 but no, that, that, that's what I'm saying. If I mean, they're ultimately these collectibles. They're designed and created for a purpose. You, in general, uh, just bringing them into your house and placing them somewhere and just having them as a static piece in your house takes away from their original meaning. Mm -hmm. To not create, to not have that stuff and not create an experience to me, to me that's just that's a loss. That's a loss, and it's a loss of. A lot, you know. I'd love it for someone to come to my house and ask me a bunch of questions about some awesome Hulk statue that I have. That's Do you have an awesome Hulk statue? I will now because I want someone to have a conversation <laughs> with me about a Hulk statue. No, but seriously, you're missing out on that. Right. You're missing out. You have that. Well, some people, because that brings us to our next show, which we'll get to in a second. You know, I I do notice though, out of the episodes from Toy Hunter that I've seen, and you know, he's digging through people's boxes. Nobody has this shit on display, really, that they're buying. he's buying from these people. So in a way, yeah, I kind of see that. And like you said, the bottom line is the dollar. 
I would, like I said, I just kind of wish they would take some time to show the, 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 the love and the passion that the collectors have for it, not just, hey, this is a toy, it can be worth money, because then it kind of gives people who've been thinking about collecting stuff, they'll kind of get the wrong impression, like, hey, I want to collect this because I like it. Ooh, it's worth money, now, now I really want to go get now it. Now, is that, is that where, the, where the dividing line is between a collector and the, the other show, the hoarder show? When he's going there diving in, where where some guy goes into someone's house and yeah, their passion, the collection, yeah, and some their passion has driven them to just that brings us a to our crazy other because to me that's like the the scariest one right there where you're just yeah being a hoarder. All right, let me. This gets us into our second part of this episode, the second show that I've watched uh, that a lot of people are talking about now, Collection Intervention on Sci Fi Channel. Yeah. Okay. Um, they've aired three episodes. I've watched all three. I've taken notes on the first two. Uh, now, the first episode, there was each episode is divided into two separate people to, with problems, so to speak. The first episode focused on Garrett and Concetta. All right, they are they were both huge Star Wars fans before they got married. They got married, and their passion for Star Wars blew up even more. Their entire house, from top to bottom, every single room, Star Wars. But Every room was managed nicely. Everything was on display. They had statue cases. They had, you know, they had shelves. You can see their couch. Their house was very beautiful. It was clean. It was neat. Everything was accessible as far as their collection and as far as actual living stuff, you know? Yeah. So that was cool. The husband ends up calling the host of the show in because he's worried his wife has gone a little bit too far because like you mentioned with the toy hunter she has a very big emotional attachment to it um i don't see i didn't see the need for him to call this host and say i need help with my wife because he did have a star wars problem also by the end of their little portion they ended up going to a Star Wars uh, ranch. It's not like Skywalker Ranch. It's another Obi-Wan museum or something like that where they do auctions. And they auctioned off some of their pieces. Um, they got some great bank for it. I will say that. They, and they auctioned off some nice pieces. Um, I thought it was pretty cool when they were doing you know, the auctions or whatever. The guy was doing the host of the, sh uh, the auction was not describing the auction pieces people properly. You know, he's like... Um, up for auction, we have this signed Luke Skywalker poster by Mark Hamill. Can I get start to be? Oh, because in an auction house, you get a program. Right, right, right. Um, but the owner, the lady, she was pissed. She, she's like, we gotta stop this auction right now, and everybody's looking at her. So the host goes over. She said, "Can I have a word with you? What's going on?" And she goes, "He, I feel he's not describing it much. There's more to it than that. If you really want to sell this piece for me, you're gonna have to go in there and really sell the, you know, sell this item." Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. So she, they went back and like an example was like, "We have this signed Luke Skywalker print. It is an eight by ten. It is signed by Mark. It was signed by Mark Hamill at this convention. You know, only so many of these pieces were made. You oh, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it kind of went there. Um, by the end of the episode, you didn't have any, enough pep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. By the end of the episode, they had sold some... I mean, they had... Obviously, their entire house was Star Wars, so I can't even say a quarter. But they did start letting stuff go, you know? And the host kind of justifies it. Well, you can get rid of the stuff that's really not worth anything, so for stuff that is worth stuff. You know what I mean? You keep going. My daughter's just tired. So um, and the second part of that is what really... This is kind of a slap in the face, this guy. The couple's name is Mark and Lolly. Okay, they were married for two years. Mark was a is a huge Catwoman collector. Anything Catwoman he had to buy. Married two years to his wife. She not once seen his collection. He would come home, go straight to the garage with whatever he purchased, put it in the garage, come back in the house. Wait, wait she would never go into the garage? She's never he never let her. Oh, that's is his dungeon. Yeah. It's the comic dungeon. It's yeah. better, listen. Those are the ones that I hate. They are behind on their mortgage. They are in debt because he would rather buy something Catwoman related than pay the bill. Get out of here. The wife said, I have never seen his collection. Once the host shows up, she goes, I need to see your collection in order to assess how deep this problem is. They open the garage, there's nothing but brown boxes. Oh my and God. And they're not even stacked properly. They're like tossed on the floor, you know, there's shelves with more brown boxes. You can't see anything that this guy owns. So she's like, she looks at him, she goes, this isn't a collection. You know, a collector, uh, you're not a collector. A true collector has stuff on display. First of all, bitch, excuse my language. Who are you to tell somebody? The kid right here, man. I said, excuse my language. 
Nah, man. Come on. Who are you to tell somebody earmuffs. what he is earmuffs. and what isn't a collection? Um, now, I, I agree. Collection. I, no, I agree with her in, in that stance. Dude, you, everything's in a box. You're just buying stuff and packing away. You, I'm sorry, are an obsessed hoarder. So I don't get where you got offended, offended by. I got offended by him saying he's a collector. Okay. You know, this was his magnificent collection. I think the funniest part of okay, this segment. Okay, you start off by saying. Uh, I know, I know. Okay, I know. yeah, yeah, okay. All right. The funniest part of this segment was, she decided to set him up in a flea market type place to sell some of his stuff. Mm-hmm. He finally agreed, you know, sell some stuff, get out of debt, make my wife happy. That should be your first thing. In the flea market, you probably didn't get as much. No, no, no. It was not not like a flea market, but like a convention flea market kind of setup. Okay, like a toy. Yeah, kind of. Thing? Yeah. Okay. So a a lot of people put up what they call display pieces. That they're not selling, but it drives attention. You know, gets customers to come over. What's so funny? I don't know. I'm looking oh, at you. um, so he had one display piece was a Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman bust. Okay. He stated, "I'm not selling this. This is actually going to come in the house with us. You know, I'll sell all of this, but this one piece I want to keep." The host was like, "That's absolutely fine. Nobody's saying you have to sell everything." Okay. So he's like, "All right, cool. That's my. That's the the attention grabber." He walks away. Somebody comes and starts eyeing the bust. He's like, yeah, how much for the bust? The wife comes out of nowhere. She's like, mmm. He goes, I'll give you 100 bucks. And the wife's like, no, I can't. Not for 100 bucks. He goes, 110. He's like, okay, you got yourself a deal. Wow, how much was it worth? I don't know. But, <laughs> but you, guy, you had me in suspense. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> the guy comes back, though, and he's just like, what's going on? And she's like, I sold it. He's like, what do you mean you sold it? I said, that's the one piece I'm not selling. That's the display piece. He's like, how much did you at least get for it? She's like, 110. And he looks at the guy, I'm sorry. You ain't buying this bust. Here's your money back. And the guy's like, uh. And then the host pulls Mark to the side. And she's like, you know, the whole point of this is to get out of debt. And she's, you know, giving him the whole spiel. And he's all like, no. Oh, so, so she's more like a psychologist then. She's like kind she's, of. Yeah, she's kind, kind of easing them down. And yeah, kind of she's trying it. to get you know, she's trying to get there with so it. So they get to the big reveal. Like, what was his connection to all this stuff? He just loved Catwoman. He's like, since he was a kid, probably problems with his mother. Probably. Um, there was an excuse that somebody gave me earlier that I cannot mention because there is a kid here. Um, I, even if I worded differently, he had an unhealthy obsession. We'll say. Yeah, they yeah, think. yeah, no, no, I understand that. And um, so at the end of the thing, he ends up deciding, you know what, fine. And he goes to the guy, here, here, you know, here's your bust, congratulations, it's a good piece. And he's like, yeah, I feel better now, da da da. And you know, at the end of the episode, they show a little update, says they're almost out of debt. Um, so I thought as a first episode, that was kind of funny. Yeah. Last night, was it last night? It was either last night or no, Wednesday night. I watched the newest episode or Tuesday, I don't know, sometime this week, the newest episode. This had me laughing now the guy the first guy was a comic collector right okay lives in california with his wife they own a condo just the two of them no kids was it one of those where they didn't they couldn't live in their own house type of thing not per se he had about 120 long boxes where does he decide to store these long boxes in his dining room oh is it you own a condo. Are you trying to tell me you own a one-bedroom condo? I've, I've actually I've seen those before. I've seen people where they'll buy the boxes and their way to display them is to literally just display those ugly-looking mm-hmm. cardboard boxes right. in the middle of your dining room. Yeah, that's... Uh, and I, they weren't in the middle, per se, but still. He had one of those dining rooms that connected to the living room to make one long... I mean, you could see the divide, yeah. but it was just still one long room. So he was sitting there, and this guy was real passionate. He was a collector, and I, I back this guy up a thousand percent. He goes, I'm a collector. Every every book I own, I've read. I own complete runs. If I have issues one through 286 and then 289 up, I'm going to hunt for those two issues I'm missing. I mean, obviously you would too. You know, you're missing two issues. Why not? You know? Yeah, but it's um, like, it goes back to that point. Okay, you got it, but then it's like, what then? He rereads them over and over. He like The stories have some sort of meaning to him. Um, one specifically, which I'll get to in a moment. But um, he was saying, you know, every run here, I could remember. He's like, this part had me laughing. He goes, you don't know. I even own the full run of Quasar. You know where I bought the final issue of Quasar? I bought it at a comic store in Rhode Island for this much on this day. And he I was just like, wow. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. But no, so his wife, I give her all the credit. She's like, look, 
I want a dining room. Okay, I want my dining room to be an actual okay. dining room. I don't want you to get rid of your stuff. I understand what it means to you, but I just want my living quarters to be my living quarters. In that sense, I don't think they needed to bring this host in. Why not just put it in a bedroom? Get a storage unit. All right, all right. You know? Yeah. So they bring the host in. Check this out. She comes in. She assesses the situation. She goes, look, your wife wants a dining room table in the dining room, so we need to do something, you know? And he's like, well, I'm not really comfortable. And she's like, well, what can you part with? Let's start small. He's like, I don't want to part with you. I can't part with anything. So he's flipping through the books, and he pulls out the Captain Marvel run written by Peter David. And he goes, she goes, well, Captain Marvel, I know that's not worth very much. And he looks at her. He's like, this is Captain Marvel by Peter David. Have you ever even read this? And she's like, no. He's like, well, you should. And he's just giving it to the host. I'm just like, ah, you know. So they convince him to take a few boxes, and she's going to set them up somewhere so he can sell. What does she set them up at? This little flea market type sale thing. Okay, but see, okay, just to just to cut you off there, this is the point where, um, just like I, th I think where the lesson's going here, for collectors who don't want to go to this point in their life where they had to have a psychologist come and just start kicking down their door, is if you're gonna, if you have the capability to do so and buy a big enough space, you know, there's always that bedroom that could always become the library. Exactly. You know, that you was know, my thing with him. Like, why didn't you just put it in? The I, I mean, the long boxes I get. You know, it's to protect them and all that stuff. But ultimately, things like ink and all that other stuff could ruin your comic book from the inside, anyways. I mean, just just think about aesthetics instead. Um, those card, those cardboard boxes really aren't that pleasing. Get yourself a library. You know, because sure. it seems no, be no. Be, I've no. seen somebody. Junior, I've seen somebody Junior. that owns a collection. It's pretty cool. You know, this the, guy was very passionate about the read. Right. Then he treats them just like any other reader would treat a novel. Okay. But how would someone with a novel treat their books? They get a bookshelf. Right. Okay. Well, for him, he stored them in comic boxes. That's the logical thing for comic collectors to do. No, no, no. But that is not the best re thing to do. If if stuff goes down, that's cardboard. It's gonna get soaked up. Your comic still gonna get ruined. Even Stuff if you put it get... in the library, it's still gonna get ruined. Exactly. So, so what difference does so it make? Think, yeah, the difference is the aesthetic. Make it look nice. Who gives a shit what it looks like? No, because you're not thinking about the aesthetic. If people come into your home that looks ugly, and they're just things they could get ruined regardless of the fact. So make it look nice, dude. It's it's your house. See, now I feel like I'm talking to you instead of talking about the. Talk guy. about them. Don't talk no, about me. Because now you you got directly defensive about it. Uh, but it's the truth. Long boxes aren't the be-all and end-all end -all to your solutions. Make your situation livable. Make it comfortable. You could establish a reading room. Have a nice couch wait, in wait, there. Wait, wait, wait. How do we get into the argument with long boxes? I'm talking about long boxes. I'm talking about this guy in his dining room. We got in it because it, they shouldn't be in the dining room. Right. They should be aesthetically pleasing. They could be stacked up as long as... The whole point is they shouldn't be in the dining room. No. I don't care what they look like. These aren't Jenga blocks, though. That's what I'm saying. They just don't belong in the dining room. That's the point. Well, I agree with you there. They don't belong in the dining room. That's why I was room. talking about the library. But the, see, you're going off track because I'm going by like the whole point of the whole collection thing. This chick looks through his collection, right? And she yeah. goes, okay, we're going to sell some of it piece by piece. What can you part with? He says, I don't want to part with anything. So she's looking through it. And this is the million dollar question. This is what really got under my skin. And that, like this goes back to whatever you collect. Comics, toys, yeah. shoes, whatever. She goes, do you have any silver age or golden age in your collection? He goes, no. I don't, I don't want to collect that stuff. And she goes, a true collector has that in their collection. Who are you to say what right, belongs right. in somebody's collection? Yeah, I get that point. It's like you, you only collect certain eras. You stuff. know, yeah, that, you that's, that's, that is, like. that's, that's rule really number dumb. one. Collect what you like. That's, that's, a, that's a really dumb thing. So then she takes him to, you know, another kind of swap meet type thing or whatever. And um, she, you know, he's, he's taking his books and he's putting them in runs by like 10, 15 books at a time, taping them up, pricing them. So the host comes by. She goes, hey, how's it going? He goes, um, this is not what I expected. And she goes, what do you mean? He goes, I was under the impression you were going to take me to like a private buyer or an auction or something. I was going to sell everything as a bulk. I don't want to piece my stuff up. I don't want people looking through my stuff like this. And she goes, well, you got to start somewhere if you want to sell it. That? She goes, you got to start somewhere if you want to sell it. He goes, that's the point. I don't want to sell my stuff. Yeah. And then she goes, well, what about, um, they mentioned earlier selling his Starman comics written by James Robinson. And he goes, no, I can't sell those because, and there was, I guess, some story behind it where he was going through a rough patch in his life, and the story that was written in that book related to his life. 
Even his wife told him, I don't want you to sell okay, his okay, books. Okay, wait, wait. So if he didn't want to sell his books, does it sound like it was a huge problem with his wife to even have the books? It wasn't a problem. The wife just wanted the space. She doesn't. She didn't want him to sell it whatsoever. It was the host coming in saying, well, if you sell it, you'll please your wife. So she kind of like messed with their heads a little bit. When you know when what you I mean? Looking at, when you're watching the show, how did, how did this, the, the whole space look like? Oh, it was, yeah, obviously it was cluttered. It was I mean, it wasn't messy cluttered. It was just the boxes were in areas they don't need to be. And with my collection being as big as it is, you know, even I know stuff like that. Like, he had the TV, and then he had the couch, and he had, like, two long boxes next to the couch. It's like, dude, no, you know, you need a lamp table yeah. or something. Yeah, and to me, that just goes back to aesthetic. Okay. There are nicer ways to but, display your collection. Okay, I'm not going with the whole display stuff. No, but that, that is the point of these episodes. It's a, you to know, some point. No, because, it is. No, because this lady here... The Barbie lady, her stuff was displayed beautifully. It was great. Everything Just was like cool. the Star Wars people. Her only problem was, well, the Barbie lady, her problem was that she put uh, some of the Barbie boxes and stuff in her son's closet. Like, no, you don't do that. Right, right. You know, but going back to this uh, comic book guy, the host, she gave him a low blow. I'm right. sorry, it was a low blow because, like I said, she knew how much the Starman run meant to him. The wife knew how much it meant to him. He, after arguing with the host about him not wanting to sell his stuff, what does she do? She goes, I'll be right back. I have something I need to go check on. Dude, low blow. She goes, because I guess it was a sort of convention they were at. James Robinson, the writer of the Star, the Starman books he was so attached to, was at the convention. Oh. She brings him over and has James Robinson talk to this guy about why he should get rid of his comics. That was a low blow, yeah. I think. So then... They come to terms, and he, she's like, all right, I'm going to take you to a dealer. You can get rid of all your stuff at once. She took him to Golden Apple Comics in California. To the comic store? Yeah. So he wasn't going to get the best deal? No. You don't do that. Especially if you're trying to help somebody get rid of stuff, and you don't want them to get robbed. You I'm want them to sure feel like... i these people are coming to suicide. You know, like, somebody came up to you and said, hey, you know, you obviously, you don't want to get rid of something, but you're going to do it. Obviously, if you're going to do it and you don't want to get rid of it, you're going to try to get the best out of it. And you know you're not going to go with, you know, you're not going to sell a, uh, somebody like that. Because you know you're not going to, you know going in you're not going to get the best deal. And I'll give the guy credit. He went in there and he didn't ask for a whole lot of money for his stuff. He goes, I want a dollar a book. That's not a lot considering he had full runs of stuff. What he had though, as a comic dealer now myself, I see why they couldn't pay him a dollar a book. You know, but what the guy told him... You know, he didn't give him an exact dollar amount. He just goes, how much are you looking for a dollar book? He goes, you got roughly 2,000 books here. I'm not going to be able to give you $2,000. He goes, well, how much can you do? He goes, I can't even remotely come close to that. The, the guy at the comic store was thinking about 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah, that's, that's a slap in the face. But that's what you'd expect at a comic book shop. Right? right, and that's why, like, okay, I think the host was kind of bogus and take it, excuse me, take it in there. Especially it being a shop that people have heard of. You know what I mean? It's a, a well repu uh, reputational shop or whatever. How reputed or what's the word? Reputable. Yeah, that there you go. So he even cussed at the guy. He's like, you know, and they bleeped it out or whatever. So the wife pulls him to the side. She says, "Look, I I don't want you to get rid of your stuff, but I just yeah, what's in it for me, you know." So they come to a compromise because again the host goes, you know, she stuck her nose in it. I guess she's. I mean, that's her job. Yeah. But there's a. I think there's a fine line that you don't cross. Yeah. So her going back to the earlier question, do you have any Silver Age or Golden Age in your collection? Because that's what value, that's what you yeah. want. I think she got the guy at the comic store to pull out Hulk 181, signed by Len Wein. And uh, he goes, she goes, see if you put that in your collection, now it makes your collection worth something. And I, it kind of went over his head, and I'm just like, what are you saying? His collection wasn't worth nothing to begin with. Who are you to say? You know what? You know? So he, long story short, he ends up trading every comic box he took in there for that one book. Well, I Maybe the flaw going into that is like instead of the psychologist for just getting them to sell their stuff and getting rid of it, which she probably just does because maybe that's her main clientele and that's just the rhythm that she's gotten used to. Okay. It's probably just get a psychologist that would just focus more on the problem. I think that would be more interesting is finding out why these people do become hoarders. I could, well, I, don't you know, know. I wouldn't necessarily call them hoarders because because a lot Some of these, of more, a lot of these I, problems I just sound like restructuring. Mm -hmm. Like, you could probably just get an interior designer in there and say, hey, I could restructure, restructure this whole room for you. Yeah, and you don't have to get rid of anything. Exactly. You know, it, we, you don't have to have a dining room table. We get some bookshelves from Ikea, 
you know, la da. You have an awesome room here. You can get a beanbag and just chill here. See now, what bothers? Yeah. I, I mean, I like seeing Actually, stuff. Actually, that was HGTV. You should pick that up. <laughs> I like watching yeah, stuff like this. Show. You know, shows like this are interesting because I can relate to them. Yeah. Um, what bugs me, I guess, in wrapping this whole thing up as far as collection intervention and Toy Hunter would be the hosts, how much uh, how much pull they have with these shows, and then the networks. Yeah. You know, But if, if you watch Toy Hunter, it kind of does look like Jordan knows what he's talking about to a point because there was one episode where he found... Any toy, any serious toy collector knows about G1 Transformers. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows they're big bucks. And if you've really done your homework on, you know, not even deep in homework, but people know the rare ones. He finds one. He goes, I don't know what this is. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, he goes, we're going to have to take this to a professional because I got to see. As soon as I knew, I saw it, I knew what it was. And I don't collect G1 Transformers. Did, was, did he mean like the type of edition or something? No, like he that? just goes, I've never seen this before. Because I know you're, you're not big into it, so... There no, was, but no, I, no, I'm thinking about his reaction. That's weird. He's, so just, no, he's digging maybe, through the box, and they were all loose. He looks there, and he goes, of, this? He goes, this I've never seen before. Because he found the G1 Bumblebee. All right? yeah. Then he finds what is officially known in the collector community as Bumble Jumper. It was a cliff jumper mold that was painted yellow because it was when uh, Transformers G1 first came out, it was two separate Japanese toy lines um, put together to become Transformers. Okay. So... Bumble Jumper is a mixture of the characters, and only a handful got out. Oh, okay. Mint on card, this figure sells for about 200 bucks, and it's like this big. So he finds the Bumble Jumper, and he goes, I don't know what this is. Every dude, Like I said, I'm not in a G1, but I know that. that could, yeah, I think that could have also been one of those parts where it was edited out. Like, yeah. Hey, this would be one of, those, one of those good side bits. You exactly. Know? Yeah, you know, yeah, let yeah, me do yeah. some research on it. He ends up selling the Bumble Jumper to a private collector for 150 bucks. Open... And now, even you know, if you open your figures, the more loose that the joints are, the less valuable they are, no matter how old. He picked up the Bumble Jumper. The arm is, like, waving all crazy. You can tell it's been transformed a million times. He says he got a good deal out of it. I guess. But when the guy told him 150 bucks, Jordan was just like, are you serious? And one of the things I um, on the latest episode, Lou pointed out to me, this is how you know it's fixed. He's digging through a box of all these, uh, like, garage sale-type McDonald's toys, right? They show the box. Everything in there is just loose. He finds one rare figure from the old 80s Lord of the Rings action figure line. He pulls it out. Tell me why this figure, so expensive as it is, is in a little baggy. Like, it's all prepared for him to find like that. Well, yeah, it's scripted. You know what I mean? But I'm saying, though, like... I, no, no, it sounds like you're getting like, upset about the very obvious formulaic things that they do on reality shows. I guess. It's part of the formula. I guess I just want, you know, bottom line, I would like a show... That doesn't insult true collectors. But that's I'm just not like even, they're doing a show for everybody, not just collectors. Right, but the downside to that is people who don't know. You know, let's say you just saw the Avengers movie and you don't know nothing about the Avengers, and you know, oh, they make Avengers toys because they made a movie and because this guy bought an Iron Man figure for twenty bucks, you know, and it's like yay big. That means everything I buy is gonna be worth money one day. So that person is gonna go out and buy a bunch of stuff, and that unfortunately for the collector market. Remember the '90s comic boom? Well, I was gonna say, well, that's how you learned that one. Remember you the know? '90s boom? But it yeah. may, you know, then then that goes and devalues everything we have now. So it's just like we just threw all our money away for nothing. Well, as as we saw uh, through our experience in pets, you know, way back when, is uh, nowadays you try to do something like that, you just don't get what you asked for. There's so a people, reason for that. People just, just there's a reason. People Pat's, learn people learn their lesson. There's a reason Pat went, Pat. It's not around anymore, and I'll get to that off camera. No, no, but even even uh, if you if you try to do something like that to, in any kind, if someone came came to you like that right now, they bought every series of the most current collectibles. You're not going to get them, you know, asking price. Of course, it's like, dude, I could just order these on Diamond right now. Mm -hmm. You kind of like didn't think through this. Here's fifty cents. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I would just like to sh see a show that doesn't. You know, it's not always about the money. I mean, I get that's what ratings bring in. That's what people want to see. I guess I'd like to see a show that just shows, you know, everything. You, you get what I'm saying? I know what you're the saying. The passion man. for it. I know what you're saying. You and know what I'm saying? And I'm oh, sorry, man, but these are shows. No, I get everybody. it. I, I get it. I get it. I'm just but you're saying. you're having a hard time accepting that. I still watch them because this is, I don't have a choice. This is all that it is. If I want to see something like this, this is all I have. This is all they're offering me. There you go. You know? 
It is entertaining, yeah, especially when I look on there and it's something I own and I know for a I fact think, how I much think, it's uh, worth, but they give you the wrong information. It just makes me feel flat. I think as far as going into like the passion or something like that, I that would probably be a good show for I what? guess I guess it'd be almost the same aspect but not have to do with money. But at the same time you gotta make sure that show gets ratings. It's always hit it. or miss. Even the ones that make, even the ones that are about money, never, you know, they don't always succeed. Yeah, but I think you just, you guys, uh, all the fans that are getting upset about this stuff, you're getting too upset. It's the same. It just sounds like the same formula for everybody. Well, other we obviously, out there. he obviously has his opinion. I obviously have mine, and there's nothing uh, wrong with either. Shut up. That's point counterpoint. Shut up, Junior. Uh, let me talk. Point yeah, I get that. Let me, let me talk yeah. here. Let me do my shtick. Well, that was the thing of uh, your opinion, my opinion. Anyway, he has his. I have mine. But we're split 1-1. One, one. Curious to see what you guys think. For those of you who have watched Collection Intervention, for those of you who have watched Toy Hunter, please comment. Let us know what you think. Do you agree with David? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with both? Do you agree with none of, neither of us? You know, go watch the shows. Obviously, before you comment, just don't comment for the sake of commenting because you want to be cool. Because, you know, if you comment on our page, you're cool, right, man? Because we're awesome. Thank you. I was afraid you were gonna leave me hanging there. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, please comment. You know, comics remix. We're all about the fan interaction. So um, until next time, I guess you got any closing words? No, that's about it. I don't see what you guys are except uh, all excited about. It's just another fun money show. Yeah. I will say though, this show has Jenny's mom. Like it motivated her to go clean the spare room she has because she has she's been telling me all this time about this trunk that her boys had from when she, they were kids and she's like I've got these old comics and I've got these old toys so it finally got her to go upstairs and clean the see, trunk see it inspires okay it inspires people no like I, it inspires it does <laughs> lowered expectations but that goes to one of the original comments that we made it's like it, it sparks up someone who who's not a collector you know I just, I guess another part of me does not want the 90s comic boom to happen to the toy stuff or to any kind of collection as far as collection intervention goes. No. You know what I mean? Because people, you know, this happens. People see stuff like this. Oh, those things are collectibles. Let me go stock up. But I think from this, you learn what to look for. To a point. Yeah. Do your research, I guess. Do your research first yeah. before you buy. But like we said, please comment. We're very curious to see what you think if you've watched these two shows. Um, until then... Thanks for watching. Keep a lookout for the, our Comic Con uh, interviews. But you gotta say you did a great job. Man. Thank you. Yeah, you, know, you, you did a you did a fairly great job. Thank you very much. You know you were you got in there. You got some good questions. Excuse me. You got some good questions. <laughs> I got in there with Melina. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, well then. Oh no! No secrets. Excuse me. This is David Sanchez. Have I'm a good night, here. people. We'll see you guys next episode. Eight. Big ol' one eight. Have a good We're night. Illegal. Almost. Alright. Later. Bye.